Okay, it's night time now, and I recorded some videos on my other phone, but they don't work with this one, so that material is probably lost. What y'all missed is I removed the exhaust, I removed the center piece right there, uh, the drive shaft, um, you know, disconnect the exhaust. Also, I pulled off the bumper, the bumper supports, so that way I could remove the uh, oil cooler and get these lines emptied. Pulled them off the radiator. Also, I disconnected the oil cooler from the transmission and began running the strap to support the front side of it. So regrouping, I'm going to clean the workspace and begin pulling out the transmission and lowering it. You want to have your two straps wrapped around the frame like this, like I said, to help support it. Unplug the transmission wire harness by lifting this tab all the way up and then pulling it out. Remove the wiring harness bracket bolt out of the transmission with a 10 millimeter wrench or socket. Using a crescent wrench as a backup and a 15 millimeter socket and ratchet, unloosen this shift mechanism from the driver's side of the transmission. Don't let too much pressure go through the shaft to the inside of the transmission. Use your backup to counteract it. Use both hands. Use a T40 Torx bit. I can't fill this on. It's T40. You want to use T40. This is going to be the shift linkage bracket support, whatever it's called. That needs to come off too. Then once the bracket's off, you pull this like that. Don't forget to put all your nuts and bolts back where they came off of. It's very helpful later on. Remove your brake line bracket. That's also 10 millimeter. You're gonna need to be able to scoot these over. And in order to do that, you need to loosen this bracket right here. That is a 13 millimeter. You're gonna need long extensions now because it's time to go back here and start getting all the bolts off from around the bell housing and out transmission will come but first we've got to take the starter off that bell housing cover that bell housing cover and we have to remove the three flex plate to torque converter bolts those are 10 millimeter on this side and the other side the starter bolts are 13 millimeter okay you will need either an 8 millimeter or 5 16 allen wrench and the 15 16 or I think it's 24 millimeter socket. You have to rotate the crankshaft with the 24 millimeter socket until those holes or those bolts get exposed on the flywheel. Okay, these flex plate to torque converter bolts are very tight. You're gonna need to get somebody to hold this uh, 15 16 on the, uh, whatever the hell that thing's called, while you loosen this. Once you break these free, they come out the rest of the way very easy. They're eight millimeter, five sixteenth. You can use an assortment of different tools to finish getting them off. The only way you're gonna get, be able to get to these, there's only one way, and it's by turning the harmonic balancer on the front, the crankshaft, to be able to expose each one through the passenger side torque converter cover hole. So I've already went through and I've loosened all three of them. I had my son helping me as a backup over here. Go ahead and unplug the crankshaft position sensor and the other sensor that's plugged in right there. Not sure what it's called exactly. And I just went ahead and unhooked some starter too. That way I got more room. Okay, and it's not until you have all three flywheel bolts like that to where you can start separating this. If you have a good dependable impact drill or air powered, then you won't have to do what I'm about to show you here. These bell housing bolts are gonna be pretty tight, at least tighter than what my little cheap impacts able to do. So I'm gonna use my ratchet 
and my long extensions to loosen them all all the way around the bell housing top of the motor and everything and then I'll come back with my impact to take them all loose this top one up there on top of the bell housing is really freaking hard to get to but you just got to know that the transmission and the engine together have to tilt down pretty far almost to the point where this bottom of the engine oil drain pan bottoms out on this cross member I'm just gonna give you some advice right now and let you know this tactic sucks. Get you a decent impact and long enough extensions so that you don't have to do this. Because when it slips and your knuckles hit that, it fucking hurts. Okay, well my battery's going low. Um, all right, all my bolts are out from all the way around. Now at this point, you gotta be careful pulling this off and do the same thing when you put it back on, but we're removing it, so. You want to make sure that, that this is high enough. This needs to come off straight. If it's hanging too low and it's like trying to, to tilt out and, and come like that, it's, it's going to bind up and it ain't going to work. If you get it up high enough and, and you'll see that it's all coming out straight, that's how it needs to go because the torque converter is splined into the... Sorry about the light. The torque converter is splined into the... Uh, or Man, something's splined in there. I just can't think of the words right now. Anyways, you do that... Uh, so, see, it is, it's loose. It's loose now. By tightening up your rear strap, loosening or tightening up this strap, and, and playing with the bottle jack some, you can adjust the angle that this is coming into the back of the engine. Okay, it is completely separated now and completely dangling just with those, with those straps. So, carefully lower it. Rush through this. Try to keep it straight and... Don't let it tilt too much to, to one side or the other. Try to keep it straight. Bring it down, put it on a two-wheel dolly or a dolly, and then roll it out of here. And that is it. That is how you remove your transmission. Okay, and just like that, use your dolly, pull it out. Uh, it's very unstable like this. The torque converter is loose, so it can pop out, fall on your hands if you're not careful, uh, throw it off balance. Just be careful when you're doing this. Don't stay under it. Uh, it can fall on you and get hurt real bad. So just always be careful. So that'll conclude the removal part two. Uh, we'll start with the disassembly and inspection process and I'll upload videos for that. Appreciate you watching. If you like it, maybe you like it. I don't know if you want. Later.